Hi everyone, in this video um, we'll do a follow-up on the previous um, video and look at the code of punch card and to see how it works and just uh, to have an overview of uh, Elif's code for anybody who's interested in writing code for Emacs. Um, so I've been um, using Emacs for a long time and I have uh, written some Elif code uh, for my configuration, but rarely I've written anything that is truly good, um, as in for anyone else to use. So this is, I thought this was interesting, uh, so let's have a look at it. Alright, so I've got the file open right in front of us, and <coughs> uh, if you look at other um, Emacs packages, you will find they follow uh, a similar structure, where they have a, a fairly lengthy header, um, that contains information about the file. Um, so we have here the file's name, the description of the file, and then this little piece of um, comment instructs Emacs to use lexical binding. Um, if you don't know what it is, it's not very important at this stage. Uh, we have some copyright information, license, and then a little bit of information on what um, the code does, what the file does. All right, I'm going to try and put the point here and stop moving the, the screen around. Okay, and I'm going to open um, the iElm uh, mode here, uh, which is a, an interactive interpreter for Emacs Lisp which I think will be quite enlightening as to what happens. Um, okay, so the, the code, um, I've tried to organize it in a way that makes sense. Uh, so we have uh, three global variables that are used by the, the module. Um, one is the punch card convdir, which is the directory where the, the uh, punch card information files are stored. So I can have a look here. Yeah. yeah, you can see it's in my emacs.d init. <coughs> Punchcard confs is the list of loaded uh, config modules. Punchcard confs, which is uh, a, a sizable amount of data. We'll have a look into a bit more details soon. And finally, we have the punchcard loading, uh, which I'm not sure contains anything. Right, so it contains your snippet at this time. Uh, this is a it's a global variable, but it's it's used only um, in specific cases, which we'll look at in a, a little bit later. Okay, so then we have the um, the definition of a structure of a struct um, for the punch card confs, and so every single config um, module for punch card is essentially just a punch card conf um, and they, con they have a name uh, which is a string dependencies which is either nil or a list of um, names list of strings and then a callback which is a function um, so all the, punch card, all the punch card configurations are loaded and then executed later which is why we have a callback here <coughs> okay um, there's a if you don't know what a what CL dev struct does, um, not only does it define the struct, but also methods to access the struct. And I wanted a a function to summarize them, so that's what follows punch card conf summary. So this just um, displays a single um, configuration in a more readable way. And we have the macro punch card, which we'll look at it, which we will look at later, because macros are a bit. Uh, it can be a bit difficult to understand, especially if you haven't written any before. Okay, <coughs> then we have a punch card register, which registers a punch card configuration. So it's given a configuration and it adds it to the list of configuration in punch card confs. And this is an important part. Uh, the punch card conf sorter is actually um, the part of the code that um, does the dependency resolution. It, it's a fairly, it's a fairly um, naive uh, dependency resolution system, but it works quite well. So we have a few 
these are unit tests for it. Um, I can show how to run them. So if you run ERT, and it asks me uh, what test to run, and I only have one, so I'm going to choose that one. Uh, yes, that one. What did I do? Sure, run it. Okay, it's run it, and we can see it passed, which is what we want to see, of course. Um, what happens here, without going deep, deeply into the code itself, um, is that um, we sort the list after loading the list of config, punch card configs. They are then sorted uh, based on their dependencies. So, if a configuration depends on another, the, the depend, dependent dependent uh, will always be loaded um, first, so that. No, the dependency is always loaded first so that the dependent has its um, dependencies um, fulfilled by the time it's actually executed. Um, so we do that and uh, as a fallback in case um, in case the two the two confs being compared are not directly related. Uh, we just put the one with the least dependencies first, uh, which is always a safe bet. And then <coughs> then comes the main, one of the most important function, which is punch card, punch card load. Uh, so if you look at the documentation for punch card, um, this is really the one everybody should run. Um, I wanted to look at the readme. Um, yeah, so within the within the um, Punch card load. Right, so punch card load is used um, to to bootstrap the uh, split configuration. So this is an important function. Okay, so we we'll look at it. Um, it is interactive. Um, so this this interactive thing here tells Emacs to show this function in the meta x. So if for example I can have punch card load here because it's an interactive function. If I wanted to run instead a punch card conf sorter, well, it doesn't appear in the list. It's not an interactive function. Okay. Uh, it takes a directory as as a parameter. <coughs> And uh, well, we can see it when run from conf. Uh, we are passing it our, our base directory. It then sets the directory we will give it. We give it as punch card conf directory, unless that's already set. And it then empties up the punch card conf variable. And then it will iterate over every file ending in .el in the conf directory. And for each of them, it will set punch card dash dash loading as the current file name, and then it will load that file. And we'll see why that's important when we look at the macro. The, the uh, use of punch card loading is, of course, so that the currently loading code knows what what its file name is. Okay. Once we've loaded everything, we've do list. So do list will iterate over every file ending with .dl. When that's done, we've loaded all the files we're interested in, and now we want to sort them. And so that happens with sort over here. Uh, as sorting function, we give it uh, the conf sorter, which is our dependency resolver. And when the configurations are sorted, we then store the result of the sorting back into punchcard confs. And finally, so when everything is loaded and sorted, we actually run the callbacks. So for every configuration in order, uh, we will call the uh, the callback that's within within that configuration within each configuration. All right. Um, okay. So. Uh, I don't think the rest is super important at this point. This is the, the heart of the module, obviously. Um, 
I think it's important, it's interesting to look at the macro now that we understand how things happen. All right, so I'll drop back to IELM and uh, so to look into macro, so macros are essentially um, they, are, they are a way to compress code. So instead of instead of writing code um, in a <coughs> sorry, the, the macro will run before the code is actually evaluated. They run during the the reading stage of um, code execution, and um, <coughs> the macro will work with uh, a number of input parameters which can be called and then it will um, use those and expand them as something else and that me that means um, we can use that to either make things that are more user friendly or do away with repeat repeat repetitiveness repetitiveness repetition and have a code that's a lot cleaner and so that, that's what the macro here does. So uh, <clears throat> let's take a look at how I would go about defining a, a punch card config without the macro. Um, all right, so we do make punch card conf. Make punch card conf with a name. And dependencies. And then uh, a callback of some kind. So um, callback will be a lambda. I uh, will just do something silly. Uh, is it not make push card conf? Yeah, that's it. Okay, so that's made a that's made an instance of a um, punch card conf structure with struct with the uh, data that I gave it. So that's cool. That's not good enough. But we want these to actually be registered into um, the list of punch card confs. Um, so we've got a function to do that called um, punch card register. <coughs> so we can call punch card register and then um, pass it the conf so we'll do that and first I'm going to empty um, I'm going to empty punch card confs so that we can see things cleaner clearer uh, so we'll do that and then if I do punch card confs yeah we can see that <clears throat> There's only foo in there. Um, so that's a way to do it. So if I wanted to actually use that, I'm going to use scratch. So if I wanted to actually use that, then I'd have to do punch card register. <clears throat> Make punch card name bar devs. Oops. Devs will be nil for this one. Why not? And then um, callback will be a lambda. Um, all right, that's one of them. Um, another one. Right. So that's, that's kind of tedious. Um, it, there's, <coughs> like the, the end user doesn't need to know about punch card register. Uh, make punch card uh, is nice, but it's very verbose. It has colon name, colon depth, especially the callback. Like <coughs> the user doesn't necessarily want to know they're writing a function. Like the, the end user might not even be a developer. So <coughs> let's try and simplify that and see what we what we can do. So uh, punch card. Yeah, I'm gonna <laughs> name it something else. Punch card C. Why not? Uh, 
So let's say it's gonna be punch card C instead. And we're going to do away, we're going to merge these two together and do away with the um, keywords and see what that's like. So it will be um, that. And then with dependencies, let's give this one a dependency. And we'd have lambda. Um, okay. So we could do that. That would already a little bit, um, a little bit nicer to deal with. Now if we had several things, we could do that. Example, uh, Python one hook. Uh, what would we do? Uh, Eglots and show. Right, now we could have a number of lines of config like that. that that's easier to consume. It's not perfect though. So let's say, what if we did away with the lambda as well? Oops. Uh, all right. <coughs> So if we can if we can get rid of the lambda, and things are even nicer, uh, and we can have a whole bunch of things, um, we can have a, a number of expressions here, and there's no problem with that. Um, now we need to. That means that we need to we need a piece of code for punch card C, but we'll take this and turn it back into this, and this is where the macro comes. So um, I'm going to go back to iElm over here, and Emacs um, uh, has a useful function uh, called macro expand, um, and macro expand allows one to investigate how a macro, what a macro actually does. So we'll look at punch card, and we're going to give it a bunch of stuff. So punch card. It takes dependencies next. So we'll do A B and we and it takes the config which is a body so plus one two and times three four. Alright. Now when we run that we can see it calls punch card register with uh, make punch make punch card conf gives it a name and the name is not a string because we are actually seeing the expanded macro here. So the name is actually a variable. Uh, it's punch card loading. It's that uh, global variable that we uh, that we use to contain the name of the file currently loading. Dependencies is what we gave it, and then the callback is a lambda that contains everything um, everything after the dependencies. So that's exactly. Uh, what we did in um, in the scratch buffer over here. So we we go from here and uh, shuffle the code around. So we end up with that instead. And this actually calls real functions and not macros. And so it can be evaluated. If we look at the macro itself, um, I'm writing macros a bit. Um, tricky. Um, it, it uses this uh, smart quoting mechanism. <laughs> I don't know if smart's the right name. But it uses a, a, an interesting quoting mechanism. And so we can see here that it starts with this back quote. And so it will it will out it will return this verbatim because it's back quoted. Except this depends here. It has a, a comma which means that depends gets um, evaluated. Um, and so we have the value of depends here instead of depends itself, and we can see it here. Uh, so depth depend. And then the callback is a lambda, so we can see the lambda here. But then the lambda the, the, is actually the contents of the lambda is config, uh, which is a list here. And that gets that gets evaluated and um, expanded in place. And so that's what we see happening here. So if you're interested in macros, I would recommend that you follow the documentation. Um, 
Oh, that you get a good book. I've got uh, Practical Common Lisp, which is where I learned about macros. I think it's, it used to be available for free. Um, I would recommend you have a look. Um, writing macros is very helpful, but it's not always that easy. All right, and let's have a quick look at the rest of the code, which is massively important. Um, so we have a couple of useful functions to deal with the list of confs. One of them is to get one configuration out of the list. Um, and then we have um, this to actually load a file, uh, a temporary file. And then we have punch card current buffer control module p. This, this, um, so the p at the end is a convention. This is a predicate. Um, this would return true if the current file we're in looks like a, a punch card configuration. So let's see if I can open one. Uh, no, no, no. Let's do a find file. If, um, why not? Maybe not exwm. Uh, that will do. Punch card. Punch card. Um. Right, so I ran the current buffer conf module p and I got 11, which is bigger than 0, so I would evaluate to true. If I run it in uh, my Elm, for example, oops. I get, uh, okay, maybe not IL, let's try something completely different. Um, Magit. Right, I get nil, because that's not, that doesn't look like a punch card config. Okay, um, punch card load file basically is a wrapper to do load file, so it, it loads the current file. Um, punch card find file is what we see when we actually run it interactively, so it's an interactive function and we can load up a, a file from the list of files easily that way. Um, display dependencies, so that, that shows up the list of um, current, the list of punch card modules that have been loaded and their dependency in order. Um, so there's a bit of, um, of buffer work here. Um, it's really not that difficult. And then we provide punch card. This is very important. Um, if you're writing your own piece of uh, code, I see I wanted to open init.l. Right, so we have the require punch card here. Um, if we didn't provide punch card, um, Emacs would load the file, but then see that nothing is provided, and so we would have an error. Um, so to be able to load a file for require, which which is which allows Emacs to only load it once, um, which is what you want for a module, then you must remember to provide it at the end. And then we have a, uh, a comment here to say the file ends. Um, this is also a convention as part of Emacs code module. All right. Um, okay, I hope this was informative to you. Um, one thing I can add is how to use the um, info mode in Emacs to find more information about Emacs Lisp. There is a, if you hit Ctrl H I, just like I did, um, you will find that there is an Elisp and Emacs Lisp intro um, that is are supplied together with Emacs, and those will uh, show you how to actually use Emacs Lisp and get started. Um, there's also resources online, like from Shali um, and other people. Um, I hope you have a good journey to Emacs and that you enjoy your time writing Elisp code. Thank you for watching. Bye bye.